Hi, and welcome back to SelfCAD. You're now watching part seven of our 3D Modeling 101 series. By now, you should be able to understand what area, volume, and 3D surfaces are, know what geometric primitives look like, and how they work in a CAD environment. Comfortably use 3D primitives and create them from scratch, and finally, know how to modify 3D primitives. If you need more time to nail these, then no worries, we advise you to rewatch previous parts for more clarity. And if you need assistance, don't hesitate to email us at support at selfcad.com. With that out of the way, let's dive in. In this video, we will continue exploring techniques to create and modify 3D objects, focusing on the object's topology and understanding how to find, understand, and fix non-manifold issues. Let's begin. How to use a plane. If you watched the previous videos in the series, you should know by now how to create a plane from scratch by either drawing a rectangle and filling it with a polygon, copying a side of a cube, or just selecting plane from the list of primitives in the application. As you know, a plane is not a 3D object as it lacks thickness, but it allows us to freely modify its topology without worrying about intersecting volume allowing us to design more complex planar shapes. Let's see how it works in practice by designing a simple office table, starting from a single plane. We'll start by selecting plane from the primitives list and customizing the number of segments we'll need for our design. Then we'll deform the faces by scaling them so we get the outline we want and delete a few of them. And finally, add thickness to get the rough shape of the desk. Now we can select some of those faces and extrude them inwards to create the drawers, and we're done. This way, by working with a plane, we manage to easily modify the object's topology by deforming and deleting faces, without causing any errors with the object that would slow down our progress and we had no issues with transforming it into a 3D model with add thickness. The advantage of using a plane. Now you might be wondering why use a plane? Can we create the same design using a cube? Well, the answer is we can, but the process will be longer and much more difficult than when using a plane. Making such a design with a cube takes a lot more time, effort, and skill. Let me show you. So to replicate the design, we need to reshape the geometry of the cube to make space for the shelves first. But we can't just select and scale the front faces as we did before, because it will just skew the entire shape and we don't want that. To counter this, we need to select the loops around the object and scale them all to transform the topology of the entire object. Now that we have the outline ready for the shelves, we can work on the hole in the middle. But again, we can't just delete the faces as we did when working with the plane. If we do that, we'll get a non-manifold shape. And sure, we could patch it up with add thickness to make it manifold, but the result is not what we want. A better way to do it is with Boolean subtraction. We can simply copy the faces we want to delete add thickness to them so they stick out from both sides, and scale it down a little so it sticks out from the bottom as well, and subtract. As you can see, the result looks great, but the preview shows that subtraction modifies the topology, which would make it more difficult to select and extrude the shelves. So we need to make them first, then go back to stitch and scoop and finalize the project. Rounding the top edges. Planes, however, are often just a starting stage of the design that we later transform into a 3D object, and then edit with other modeling tools. Using our office table as an example, we'll showcase one of the most popular modifications, rounding edges. Rounding, or rather beveled edges as we call them in 3D, are very common modifications not only in digital design as it has practical applications in, for example, woodworking. Bevel is an angled cut that removes the sharp edges. 
In different 3D applications, you might find this tool under different names, depending on how it cuts the edge. Sometimes the use is limited to just cutting off the sharp edge, sometimes it allows you to round it and more. In SelfCAD, we call the strict bevel chamfer and the round edges fillet. But regardless of their names, they all serve the same function, softening edges. If you watched our previous episodes in the 101 series, you should remember our round objects tool. And you might wonder if you could use it to round the edges. The answer is no. Round object tool will round the entire shape, which will basically deform the object as a whole, while chamfer and fillet will only affect selected edges, narrowing the scope of the modification and allowing you to make more precise changes. We describe the difference between chamfer and fillet above, but both tools have one thing in common, that being the space, meaning the faces on both sides of the edge to apply their effects. Let's look at our table example. Faces on both sides of the selected edges are small when compared to the rest of the model, which leaves us with little space to apply the effects of both chamfer and fillet. As you can see, we're capped and can't insert a higher value because doing so would self-intersect the edges and make the model non-manifold. So what do you do if you want to bevel the edges, but you don't have enough space to get the result you want? In such cases, you should try Stitch and Scoop, our version of Boolean operations, to cut volume regardless of the face structure. To do it, you could create a new object, a cube for example. Position it at an angle and use Boolean to cut out one shape from the other to make the bevel, or create half of a cylinder and use it with Boolean to round the edges. Still, it would take a lot of time to calculate everything, so let's see if there's an alternative way to do it. For that, we'll need a second shape that encompasses the entire table, but without the restrictions of the face structure. Bevel the edges of the copy and then use Stitch and Scoop to combine both pieces. We'll create a new shape by drawing a profile, filling it, adding thickness, and setting the resolution to zero just to get rid of those cuts. Now we can fill it the face at the top, select both shapes, and cut out the intersection from both objects, leaving us with nice round edges at the top. Avoid making small holes. However, Boolean-based modeling is not a perfect one-fit-all solution, as it can cause some manifold issues in some cases. Sometimes the faces get cut so thin they lose any thickness, making the object non-manifold, or they get deleted altogether, leaving you with holes in the object. As you can see, we got a few thin faces at the top corners, but everything is connected, so everything's fine. But if you see a non-manifold error, you could try changing the size of one of the objects to cut a little less volume. In this particular example, we could also try to round the other object a little more to smooth out the final result. But to do it, we need to up the resolution first. It's a very situational solution, but considering how versatile resolution and round objects are, let's see how they work. Using the round object tool, it's an amazing tool for rounding entire objects based on the face structure. For example, rounding a basic cube will result in a sphere. But if you subdivide the cube, you will only soften the edge and keep, for the most part, the cube structure. So the more edges you add to the object, the more it isolates the effect of the tool. You can use this function to selectively add edges to parts that you want to keep their structure, while leaving the other parts with fewer edges to round them more respectively. One downside of this tool is that by rounding the object, it increases its resolution as well, making it too detailed. We call it high poly geometry, meaning there are too many polygons, and it can slow down the performance of the application, especially if you're working with the browser version. On the opposite side of high poly, we have low poly modeling, which means keeping the number of polygons as low as possible and adding more when absolutely necessary. It makes it much easier to modify and reshape objects when you have fewer faces to select and edit. It is also the preferred method for professional designers in VR, video games, and practically any industry where performance matters. So the goal is to keep the poly count as low as possible without changing the object's appearance. Using the resolution tool. 
One option to manage the level of detail of your objects is the Resolution tool, which allows you to increase or decrease the overall number of segments of the object. However, you can only lower the poly count of flat surfaces, so it won't help us much with this object. In such cases, we need to look to other tools. Resolution versus Simplify. The difference between those tools is that resolution can only add or remove faces from existing polygons, but it cannot add or remove them. In other words, it will not change the overall smoothness of the object, just change the resolution. Let's see how it works on a sphere. Here, each polygon consists of a single face, so even if you try to lower the resolution, the tool won't find any detail it could remove. But if you increase the resolution first, you could lower it later on. The Simplify tool, on the other hand, was designed to reduce the poly counts by reducing the smoothness of the object. It uses very advanced algorithms that can remove a lot of details with minimum alteration of the object's appearance, making it a preferred option for lowering the poly count of complex and round objects. Making Wireframe Geometry So far, our 101 series has focused on creating and modifying solid objects. Now, let's see how to create shapes that resemble a wireframe. Most CAD software have the option to visualize the wireframe of the mesh, but that's just a visual, and you can't export it or use it for anything other than display. However, SelfCAD has a few options to convert those edges into a watertight mesh, with each method having a specific use case. Using the inset method. We'll start with the simplest way to do it, which is by deleting the inner parts of the faces and adding thickness to the remaining wireframe. To do this, we need to split each face in a way allowing us to delete the inside. We can do that with the inset tool, and after finalizing, we can simply delete the freshly created cuts. As you can see, SelfCAD kept the selection of the lastly edited surface, so you won't have to bother with the selection again. And now that we have a ready wireframe, we need to add volume to make this object manifold, which we'll do with Add Thickness. And we're done! Just be careful about self-intersections when adding thickness to the wireframes. It's easy for the neighboring faces to intersect, which will make the object non-manifold. Using the Bevel tools, you could achieve a similar result with Chamfer or Fillet. In the Fill settings for those tools, you'll find the options to remove the polygons from the object, leaving you with just the beveled frame that you can transform into a 3D object with Add Thickness, as before, using Follow Path. Another option to create wireframe-like shapes is with our Follow Path tool. In essence, this tool sweeps a profile, or a shape, along the other edge or profile called the path to create an object. For this, we need the path first. We could do it by drawing the lines with the 3D Sketch tool, but for this purpose, it'll be much easier to select the edges of the object and create their copy. SelfCAD will automatically convert the selected edges into a separate profile, saving time and effort. Now that we have the wireframe, we need to split the edges into non-intersecting paths. We could either copy them separately or select the loops and split them. The result is the same. Now we need to draw a profile or create a shape we want to use as a base. Remember, this should have the size and style we want the wireframe mesh to look like, so it's best to edit it now. Also, if you want to use a profile, make sure it forms a closed path to avoid any open surfaces later. And now that we have everything ready, we can select the base for our shape first and then the path. This is important as the software will sweep the first selected object along the second selected object. With that done, just open the Follow Path tool and create the shape. With that done, there's one more thing to do. Combine all those pieces into a single volume with Stitch and Scoop's Union option. The difficulty, however, is that Union was not designed to handle so many split objects simultaneously so you might run into an issue with the loading time. One way to shorten it is to merge all the non-intersecting objects together and then union them into a watertight mesh. And that's it for this video. We hope that after watching this episode, you'll know how to modify and fix the topology of your objects and how to create a variety of tools to create wireframe-like shapes. 
In the following videos, we'll delve more into plane and face cutting and splitting tools. So stay tuned.